post off. Welcome to you all. First photo of Nick this one of uh, Sylvain, as you can see, made in Canada. He supplied me with my can of seeds. But uh, oh, he's obviously in the Strange World group, and that is a strange world. Man face stink bug. Brilliant aid. Love it. Right, uh, <coughs> saw this as well. Was delighted to see this in Little Island. Irish made environmental sound. I've, I've said this before, seaweed based plant food. Bought myself a couple of bags to see how good it is. We'll keep it posted. Interesting to see that Little Island seems to be up in their game in garden. And uh, I just asked the question myself is it just in Ireland? He says, best thing is to go and ask your own little see if i'm having in which i did do a couple of days later and as yet we ain't better and not having any in or uh anything that's seaweed based anything like that i'd uh i'd have bought a bag just to try it but uh not yet you never know it might come in later right raised beds as you know that's my main one what well, besides the ones up the top or a garden wise this bit of a garden that's my main raised bed these are my recycle raised beds uh my large tubs these are raised beds as well just a smaller version but a raised bed it, it gives you a, a better growing medium because you don't fill them then you put crap in it warms up quicker better drainage and a better root structure underneath because I got a good brew. <clears throat> right, these three here, uh, in fact, most of the, the raised beds, because at the end of last season, I top dressed them all and then put this covering back on again. And as you can see, these three have dropped. They all drop. They usually drop uh, from um, compaction. It's usually treading on them, but because we, it's a raised bed, the proper size you want, you ain't going to tread on it. But it still get compact with the winter rains, or well, winter and spring rains. They uh, compact it as well. So then we'll be uh, top dressed later on. Two grapevines in the tunnel. This was took uh, about a week ago. Or, uh, got me bugs showing which is uh, a sign of everything warming up two raised beds there these two are going to be for me uh my carrot carrot beds my stump carrots obviously for uh, having second thoughts for a change of mind went to buy a local florist up in Collie Gate, and uh, this is where I usually get me uh, my florist buckets. These they either been all returned, and I shall see. This is the back of the shop, and uh, as soon as you get a load, they they bung them, but they do leave some out because they know. Well, I must have had a, at least three hundred of these buckets off them over the years for the kids up the school. I used to, each kid had, had one of these large buckets, much of as compost, and they used to put a spud in and grow the spud in that bucket. Exactly the same with um, stump carrots as well. All to purpose compost, sown thinly, and then just pull the carrot out, thin, finger and thumb, once it's been waited. So I've had loads of buckets off them, and for the disabled plots. And it's what I use. When I'm taking, if I'm doing a tour and I'm donating garden related rough prices, I usually put them in that bucket and get in the bucket. Obviously, they keep the bucket. So I, I went down to get some more buckets, but I noticed these while I was down there. And it got my brain going in the sense these was nice and solid. So I bought them on. Got no drainage holes in. So I put some in. 
in this stuff I've had in the shed for yogs. You know, you know, it's, you think that, that'll come in handy one day. And luckily for me, because I've got gaps in between them, that's going to cover. It's going to be a base at the bottom, and it covers the, the three of them. Like so, perfect. It's just to cover the holes. I mean, the way it will still get through, we stop all the crap coming out of the holes, basically. Perfect. Then I noticed this little chap in there. God knows how long he'd been in, but he's still alright. So I lifted him out and put him back in the garden. So all them pots now that I empty turn upside down. So I'm not that core happening again. Got to look after the chaps. Uh, this is uh, all smug, needs rubbing out. As you can see, it's, it's dried in lumps, which is what I want. Because I can rub it out because it is dry. As you can see, they use uh, shavings on this one for the bedding. This is uh, another one. This one's dried goat muck. This is also rubbed out. And it's in powder form, not in big lumps. And mixed with everything else, but also getting the lumps out of that. That's what I want. Beautiful stuff. And this one is all my other ingredients. It's a mixture of guinea pig, dried seeds, dried shredded seaweed, worm casts, rock dust, spent mushroom compost, topsoil, uh, chopped, dried bracken. As you can see, you can still see the bits in there. Uh, this is all mixed. All the bits I do uh, take out, it'll be thrown away. I've got my fruit trees down here. Help that as a top dressing. And that one is clover with uh, the liquid. Uh, originally, uh, I was thinking about putting them on top of here, my carrots, to give me the, the depth where uh, that went out the window. Instead, I'm going to do that. Because they're not, they're not nice and solid. I've got three pots. Uh, that will give me them two beds spare then, because I need them two beds for my gladdies. So, pots I've got, these are the largest ones I've got. Uh, near enough about the same width, which is 12 litre, which is a good size pot. This is Russian on the morning, taking it down uh, Omer Hill. Still looking at these canners. Another month or so, I want to see these perch coming out of these. Then I know I'm happy to plant out and leave them out over winter because this is more open than what my back garden is. Well, I'm going to plant out canners at least three this year, put that up against the fence so they've got a bit of protection. But these should spurt. There was a talk I did a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned canners, and the woman said her story has been growing them about five years. And has left them outside for the past two years and got away with it. Just chop them down on the first frost, mulch them, and that looks after them. But just keeping me eye on the on the chaps. Right, one pot. I forgot to net. Let's see the bloody squirrels going in that one as well. So I've got me some more plastic coated netting, cut it out to stop the chap getting in. Right, gladdy. The gladdy manual come during the week. Uh, I'm still a member. Cost me uh, eight quid because I'm an older was affiliated to all the um, Gladiola Society, this is Collier Garden Club, Gladiola Society, Daily Society, National Society, 
and then Chris had this idea. It was a cutbacks we had to make. We were knocked on the head all the affiliations. It's quite a few garlic clubs struggling there. And uh, nice to see Nigel Cole on the front page as we turn over. That was his uh, grand champion. That was a Midland show, obviously last year. And I want to try and get to this this one this year. I've got nothing on the calendar, so I'm going to make Dave up uh, Chesterfield, see if he fancies a day out. And here we've got uh, this was the show last year, the winners. Same merch show, and there's no entries for one spike novice, three spikes novice. So if I have got anything ready, I shall take them up to that show. That's that's where I've uh, been getting on to uh, all, all uh, exhibitor people who do the shows and that just put a, 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 a novice section in and you'll get them in well, obviously the one on there last year online shows the that's uh, the Yellow Rock Society was doing this again last year and then which is Steve Medicott he's a, a zoomer and he got a couple of wins in last year but I uh, into the year before, but last year I was that busy running around like the blue ass. Never put any, so I brought on Steve. Right, sweet peas. As soon as they start showing, I've got a few in the propagator and a few outside. But as soon as they start showing in there, then, then they come out the propagator. It's only the room. And then the giant cape gooseberries. So there's two through there, so I've got them two ready. Small fork I've borrowed out of the kitchen. It's perfect for getting right underneath that. If you want to put that fork in about that fur and you lift him out, you've got a chance which is actually the root. You're down here. But you've got to get right down and get the lot out. If you, you snap that tap root off he's got a chance of going to see it later on in life so I'll get right down and get the lot out so my first one planting him upright only pushing in round the outside I don't push that down in the middle so I'm firming that in from the outside if that makes sense so there's two of that out of there and there's one more little chap so I left him in there to grow on. So them two are just potted up. Nice sunny day. Lukewarm water, not cold. Rain water. Just kept in the greenhouse. Here's a meat mechanics from Rhizome. Or well mechanics anyway, these are from uh, Rhizomes and seed. I'm trialing both. Also, I'm going to put a talk together. Hopefully, ready for next year. So I've got the bug on now. My canners. Another close up. You can see the chaps coming through. Right, my propagator. What I've got going in there is different seeds. Got the variety. These are field pollinated, so I'm virus free. These are from made in Canada, Sylvain. So I put a couple in it. Well, originally three in of each, with some are potted up. As soon as they start spurting, as you can see, that one's going to come out very soon. But these are checked daily. A bit better there, you can see the spirit there, the light is a bit blurred. And to get them out, I just put a teaspoon in and get them out of that room. To put my finger and thumb in, I've got a chance of smacking in.
multi-purpose compost, which is the clover, which is the, the Michelite. Put my little chap in, as you can see. You can either put the name on the side if you use plastic cups, or if not, put a label in. But it's easy to forget to label them. Again, that could, there's that one I've just got out. So he's telling me, pop me on. So that's another one I've bunged in. Two more I've had of watering. Right, these two, these are good solid pots, made from uh, Asda. Nice and sturdy. These will be for the large canners which I'm uh, dishing out. I've already given two away as a present. We're in these, these pots. They're perfect. Well, I'm six quid each. They're going to do the job that they're going to do. Fancy uh, flogging pots. And they got no holes in. In the garden section. So they got uh, they got them in. So I put the own in. Well, I put on the. Um, I think it was uh, week before last in the greenhouse. One of the leaves was curled up, like in there. Now it's the one up, another one in the tunnel. So it's going to have a closer inspection. Yeah, someone's in hiding inside there. It was is uh, enclosed in the leaf just to keep the sun off him and to stop people like me finding him out. And there's a little culprit once I open the leaf up. So he got squashed. So if you see anything turned in, just check it. Roly, our first inputter. Are you on, Roly? Yeah, I had a bit of trouble getting started tonight, but I got in eventually, Mick. Good man, good man. All yours, mate. No, oh, well, you, you never swap them around anyway. Um, all, all, all this picture is, I've not got a lot, nothing technical with all my compost in this week. Um, Basically, that's my stump carrot or a quarter of my stump carrot bed. They're all uh, set and ready to go. Obviously, the um, bits of pots there, so you can keep the shoulders covered so that they don't uh, get a lot of muck in or, or go hard. Um, never mind. Ne next one then, Mick. Also, actually, that picture of the carrot should have been last, but uh, not to worry. Th this is... Uh, once again, growing the pongo beans early in the uh, greenhouse, just to have as early a feed of beans as we can get. So very prolific last year and very early. So, you know, it worked one year, so you do it another year, don't you, and see how you get on. That's it. And they're, they're basically, obviously, you can see in 45 gallon barrels cut in half and done long ways. Um, and the, these, like I say, I'll, I'll put it down here. They're slightly more advanced at this time of the year than they were last year. And the compost mix is homemade, multi-purpose, with biochar, alpaca poo, compost mix. Um, like I say, I'm really trying the alpaca poo on everything this year to see how it gets on. Um, the next picture, hopefully, if that comes out in the right order, yeah. You can see they're on the rain gutter water system. Uh, with just a ball valve there. Um, and it's got the neck cups. There's three neck cups in each barrel. Um, and they've, they've actually got rolled up pillory matting in them to draw the water into the pots. And it works. So my answer is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, you know. Right. Um, so, and I, to be honest, I use wicking systems really in two or three of the greenhouses because i find it's easy no messing about you can see what you're doing you, you have to throw a sheet over it otherwise obviously the algae turn takes over but then you expect that don't you with the hopefully the sunshine we have yeah you want to go to the next one then mick and these uh are swift potatoes the early ones and all i've done is done three bags of them um just to see how early I could get them. And, and they're in homemade compost, worm casts. Uh, and what I've done, I read it 
somewhere that somebody was putting a shovel full of alpaca muck in the bottom of the bag, putting all the stuff on top, and then another shovel full on the top, so that basically every time that you're watered, you're feeding them. So again, never tried it before, so yeah. we're mulching it, and we should also be able to see whether it's true that pack of manure don't grow seeds so i thought well you know earlier in the season you'll know won't you yeah so that's why that's like that um in actual fact all of the potatoes that i've set so far this year in bags there's various pictures coming along um i've put that on everything uh, a shovel full of alpaca in the bottom and on the top so uh, nothing ventured nothing gains they, they will be fed further down the line uh, with comfrey juice, so you know who knows what they'll turn out that like. And the next picture, then, Mick, please. A message just showing you that the the, the bags are what the um, cannabis th growers fly tip around our way, uh, full of coir. Um, and there's, there's a couple of us going to pick them up anyway. Um, and that's all they are. That, them, them ones in that picture, in actual fact. 30 litre bags um and what they got they got charlotte's in them just to try another lot of earlies um and again look i keep repeating myself uh, with the same compost and stuff put through uh next picture mick please yeah this, this is i've never grown purpleoid seedings before and so i thought i'll have a crack you know um Oh, whatever the names of plums, sherry plum generally wins something with them. So I thought, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gain again. Have a crack. Yeah. The one on the right hand side is from, I was sort of involved with the Flitwick Gardeners Association, which is obviously the FDA. And we have a class in the October show for who can grow the, not the heaviest weight for one, but the heaviest weight of, um, from one potato so i was label that up straight away and right on as soon as they give us the potato um i right on it this year as strangely last year as well because they usually do a different one each year but their harmony is what it is uh, last year i got nowhere near it but strangely the chairman you know what chairman are like they're always on the fiddle he had over double the weight from his one as everybody else and he <laughs> He is saying that the reason was he, he only fed his with um, liquid seaweed. But what he didn't know was his wife didn't know he was doing it. So it was getting watered twice, once by him and once by his wife. So whether if you drown them in liquid for, um, seaweed, it works or not, I don't know. But it seemed to work last time for him. Um, yeah, they're nearly done with me. The next picture, Mick, please. This is um, the stump bed. What what they are, they're, they're double glazed plastic. When you have a skylight on your building, because my son's got this um, flat roofing company where he travels all the way around doing that, uh, they usually have a glass top on them. But of course, he's got all the spares. And I said to him, what are you going to do with them? He said, well, I don't know. You can have them if they're any good to you. So, um, oh, sorry, I don't know how many there was. The best part of 20 of them. So uh, I only put the strap round till the sand settles. So I filled them all up with the sharp sand, obviously. There's my template for coring the holes out, which are six inch centers still. Um, and the, the first picture, which should have been the last one, <laughs> shows where I've actually cored them and put the uh, uh, pots around the top. Mick was asking, about the carrot mix that I use, well, I'm going to this year use four different mixes. The mix that I always used in the previous years, and, and there's not many years gone by since about, I only started showing about 2017, and I usually pick up a couple of firsts each year for me stump carrots, and I usually um, use and I've done the mixes for him, in actual fact, for a couple of years, what Marcus Powell used. Um, 
and we did change them and i have got it up here if anybody really wants to know what the mix is but we did change the mix because the um Levitons f2s we thought was too dear in the finish um and we had a struggle to get it down our way so we went and started using the clover professional seed um and module and just adding 10 percent sa uh, silver sand to that and it's worked so one of them will be on that full mix the current the first one that i've done um i'm trying it again with the homemade compost which really is is as i say one third wood chips one third lawnmower cuttings and one third horse muck um that's about 18 months probably two years old put through my sieve and then put through the shredder to give me the base and i've, I've been calling that my own homemade multi-purpose then i've added to that 20 liters of worm casts 10 liters of silver sand um and when i've done a um a crushing if you like of my biochar I was like, we left it in the cement mixer too long with a couple of rocks in it, and some of it was like powder. So I thought, well, again, throw some in and see what happens. But it was uncharged, so it hadn't been, um, you know, soaked in anything. So we put the uh, the very fine biochar in it, and then just a handful of superphosphate and calcified seaweed powder. Mixed it all up again, stuck it in the hole, put three seeds in each core um, and walking about with my legs crossed now just to see what happens. You know, but that's the first one. Of, of actual fact, I've set a second set, which, because um, there's two dozen in each one, or there will be two dozen in each one. I've only actually done two, two of them so far. And the other one's got pretty much the same minus the biochar. So um, I'm in the lap of the gods with that. And... Uh, that's my input for this week. Excellent, Rolly. Is, is this outside in the open? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. The, yeah. Basic, basically, what I've done is I've revamped it. You can see I've got the JCB in the background. Well, I've been levelling the ground and messing about. Um, I've, I started doing, let's say, this carrot set up. I mean, other people take the mickey, or Darren down this end takes the mickey out of me. Um, in 2017, I decided I was going to do a proper professional carrot setup, um, and I got all the 45 gallon barrels and cut the tops and bottoms out of them. And just to put or say what I've done and why I've done it, the barrels are I've used steel barrels where everybody else uses plastic, yeah. and the reason, the reasoning in using steel barrels is um, Marcus again, because of sort of messing about and helping him over the years. We found out that the in the summer when it gets hot, the plastic barrels expand and of course the sand sinks. So we found that the steel barrels don't do that, whereas the blue plastic ones do. So we changed over to steel barrels. So in front of that, which you can't see, um, I've spent a couple of three weeks on it, is I've actually um, welded some 5 by 2 steel box section together and made like two goalposts that lay on the side. Um, the centre is filled up with sand and the barrels will sit so that they're on either side of the steel goalpost laying on the side, if you're with me. Yeah. Uh, they're now waiting to fill up with sand. Um, but what I've done is I've got... I've, I've, get some pictures of it when I, you know, in the next couple of weeks, where I've stood the barrels like on the steel framework to prop them up. Obviously, them barrels are only 32 inches deep anyway. So then I've got some sand underneath. But then what I've done is I've cut another barrel in half. So for the long carrots and, and parsnips and beetroot, will be one and a half 45 gallon barrels high. So, um, and the benefit of having the half barrel on the top is you're not going to lift the sand so high to fill it all, have you? Because you can fill the first one first, and then you yeah. the half the barrel and lift it. But um, th this one is dead simple because all I do with this 
just get a bag of sand, lift it up with a JCB, hold it over, and cut the bottom of the bag, <laughs> and it automatically fills the barrels up without shoveling it, or containers up without shoveling it. So I will, ready, certainly ready for next year now, have a proper carrot set up for both stumps and long carrots, and, and like I say, um, beetroot and um, parsnips as well. Oh, uh, real? Uh, um, that's it, unless anybody wants to know or anything else. That anybody got any questions for Rowley? No. <laughs> I threw that one in and all. I knew yeah, this, is, this is to make Mick jealous. Because of, um, mm. I, I, I picked up well, over three cubic metres of alpaca up where this lady had got it stood to one side um, and somebody let her down. Uh, and I said to her today, I'd run out. And the reason was I got these um, framework or, or bays done that are four, four foot cubes. Uh, and the alpaca from her is layered with wood chips, alpaca, wood chips, alpaca, all the way through. And I wanted some just straight, uh, I didn't want to go and rob that because I've only had it down a month. Uh, so I got this from her to go in the bottoms and tops of my um, potato bags. So, and like I say, the benefit of it is, I leave a trailer down on her holding, and when she does all the gathering up of the poo, she loads the trailer for me, she dips it in there, instead of on the floor and shoveling it. So. Um, like I say, I popped down to see Lynn this morning and uh, picked that trailer up. And obviously, I left another trailer down there ready for the next load. Brilliant. What's yeah. stuff, alpaca mug? Well, the proof of the, And I, I should try and play with it in different ways. I've got some more there now. Um, only a couple of bucketfuls laying about that I'm trying to dry, or now I am drying it. Yeah. Um, and when it's dry, I shall put that um, through the shredder. And so I've got some light powdered alpaca mutt to add into the compost. Yeah, brilliant. But like I say, without trying it, you don't know, do you? So, um, yeah. Give it a go. Thanks Boston, for cheers, Rowley. <laughs> That's the best picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grow them again this year. Uh, I could try out them on alpaca, couldn't I? Oh, I'd love yeah. it. But uh, I'm sort of proud of them. Good man. Cheers, Rowley. Okay, thanks. Cheers then, mate. And everybody. Right, these are me uh, canners from last year. Obviously, when they were growing away, um, the first, they'll flare till the first frost. You then just cut cut them back. They've had a, as you can see there, when I cut them back from last year. And then just bung them in a cold greenhouse. Uh, let them dry out. Keep them dry. And uh, you, the top dries out, you think the lot's dry because they've had nothing all over winter. But there is moisture on the bottom because uh, it started coming through again. And obviously, when they're ready, got the right uh, conditions, then they'll shoot up right out of here. But if we go onto the same photo but a close up, it just shows you the distortion here. Uh, Go back on that one because he's now getting root bound or pot bound because the shoots on the rhizome and on the sides because the main plants in the middle he's, he's kicking out meaning upend me and pop me on so that's what we'll be doing in a bit these were all some I bought off the internet Tropicana canners these are from last year. You've got to watch what you're buying off the internet. I've learned a mistake. I shall do it again. I've got now a proper canner people. There's only about three or four in the UK who will give you decent stuff. No, I'll put their um, details on probably next week or week after. But uh, don't just get them off the internet, eBay, things like that. Because they're crap. We'll come on to them later on. Uh, that was another pot that was outside on the garden last year. And he as well, with that pot stronger in him. 
uh, it, it, it ain't bearing out what they all need putting on and that one even more so the shoots is, is dishing out but what got me first on the canners was the variegated leaves the colors on if you get the sun behind them it shows straight through and beautiful and the flower is a bonus Durban canner this is the first one I had first one I saw off um, so the colors were, were and the leaf was a Durban variety and then beautiful so up in the chap get him out as you can see nice root structure white roots so them are the roots beginning off these lot here in the old roots that are off the old canna obviously right that's a rhizome at the bottom and these grow horizontal when they're in a pot and that's a new shoot coming off the Lizzie, yes, got a question. Is that in your compost? Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice, you, thank you. you. You see the mixture in a bit, I'm going to bung it on. Thanks. How'd you get on with that seed, Lizzie? Any good or not? Um, it's just cracked. Uh. So it's starting. Good. Got it on a heat mat at the moment. Oh, bro. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um, th there's a little shoot. There's one shoot coming up there. So I'll just scrape away a bit of the growing medium and you see the shoot itself. So you've got to be careful when you are scraping away. Because you might take the top off a shoot, which obviously you're, you're knacking that one up. So I'll just work from the outside looking in. Put it on his side. Now I've done it all I'm going to use is a bread knife. I know I'm going to put it straight down. See, they get two out of him, which this one I can't get two out of him because I know there's a shoot that side and one this side. Well, one there and another one come through this side. But he will have another one in from the rhizome there. So I know I've got two good plants just going straight through that. Another plant, if he's bigger, then you might get three or four or five out of them. Because uh, this is a large one, I'm going to use one of my sturdy pots. In fact, I give this away last week as a, as a, a prezi, and I was chuffed a bit with it. So I've got one new shoot either side of that, besides the others. That's where I've sliced him. And now the bottom of the rest, although there's no shoots coming up, but they will be because there's one there, we can see, and there's one on that knuckle and on there. So I've got four out of that one plant. Uh, International Canner Society, I'm in this on Facebook as well. Uh, I bought this from Stuttgart Canner, ball from Bex, Brex. Delivered yesterday, not sure if I should send it back because it feels so hard and fibrous with no eyes. Meaning there's a rhizome that was last year's growth and there's no shoots or eyes coming out at all. And they, they shouldn't have sent that out. Then just really trying it on. And uh have I got the answer? Yeah. Yeah, no eyes, it won't grow. Send it back and ask for the refund. Rhizomes from bricks are all infected with a can of virus uh virus anyway. Yes, Paul. Uh, that can we just show with no eyes on it? Yeah, this one here, yeah. I had three off the internet come. And I was worried about it not and I thought, so I messaged him, and this bloke said to me, he got a big, what the fuck I think of his name. Anyway, I said to him, these are not going to grow. He said, they will, give them a chance. And a week later, I've got three shoots. Yeah. Off three tubers, or oh, not tubers, rhizomes, and they've come up. Oh, uh, good man. They've seen quite well. You've been looking at it. Right now, they'll shoot. They'll force the shoot up, so they've worked. 
Mm. I'll let you know I'm warming you in. So they do shoot, but you just got to give them time. Okay, cock. All right, boss. We'll see how we go. Right, uh, as a growing medium, I want to start using my own compost. So all I do is scrape the top uh, inch away so because there's still stuff I'm putting on which is breaking down. Getting some brew out. Because it's going in a pot, I've got to pick all the worms out. If it was going into the top dressing, the raised bed, all established big pot, then I'd leave the worms in. So I'm checking the worms out. Worms go back in the bin, cover it up. Right, so I'm using clover compost mixed with the vermiculite, and I'm using my own compost. That lot is mixed, and at the bottom, I'm putting a guinea pig, guinea pig muck, similar to Rolly's alpaca muck. There's, there's no strength in the alpaca muck at all, taking the burner roots, nothing. Exactly the same as guinea pig and rabbit muck so that's had a, a good dollop underneath him uh, I also messaged Sylvain from uh, Canada cut back in cut back in the, the roots I don't want to take too much off because I know if, if they have white roots obviously then the shears but he says yeah I'm cutting back they will come back so there's more mixture you don't want to bury these too deep soil level as well as they was before and you started getting them up so just hold them up right with one end and then uh, i'll pack all me, me good stuff around the outside find any worms out i'll take them out and all so i've got my shoots on here you can see them so i know i can get away with them because i can see them that was just covered in overnight with the clover compost because it was getting a bit dark, I couldn't see until the next day. Next game, come, let's take them out. This is going to be a pain to get out, so I'm leaving that to last. Uh, never water with it, well, I never water with cold water. Obviously, it'd be alright in, in the summer. And uh, luckily, I've got um, electric, so I've got a kettle. Bore me way into. Hold them outside on a flat slab. Give him a good way to Watch it drain, bring him back in the greenhouse. Still weekly feeding me lemon, obviously, with the uh, citrus feed. And, and that's that's working as well the smaller pots because these are smaller so i'm cutting all the older crap off the dead roots so i'm getting in the pots obviously so Ryan says you don't have to but obviously them them taking room up with this new compost in a smaller pot another one to um slice up busting leaf again love them this one is a canova orange exactly the same thing again i'm going to take that um straw away so i can have a look in there and see where i'm going to slice him or i can at least get four out of this one there's one dollar there's another one May seem cruel just to slice down, but you've got to be cruel to be kind, but it works. In fact, I've got five out of him. This is why the in the States or warmer climates, when they put them outside, they grow exactly the same outside. Now they have to split them because they take over, which is obvious in it. Any that look duff like this. Check them, make sure they're not uh, diseased, which that one was. So I just uh, sliced him away, don't eat him. There's enough other chaps on there to get going. So 
So chop his roots off so I can put him in, get him to the right level and then go through all of them, doing the lot. Put these outside ready to be weighted. Two more good ones so they'll, they'll be in a good pot. I've got decent holes out of the bottom. I don't want the crap wind through the holes when I'm moving in bed. Take my carpets off, want some more crap out. Cover the, take away the top inch and get my compost out. Beautiful stuff. I've used loads of this, my own compost this week. Jobbing all these. Worms go back in, get to work on everything. The carpets dry out, away from. Right, I'm emptying my compost into my bag, ready to be mixed with the clover and the micellar. And uh, my tray, of course, seeing very well here, but that is still chocker with worms, babies, and the eggs, which are just opening up. Where's the worm just going out there? So, with that lot, all I do is put on a raised bed, water it then all the worms are going to that raised bed. Right, last one to go in, one of my solid. Oops. Although clover compost is supposed to be good, which we'll come on to later on, I'm still getting lumps of crap out. And that is a pebble. How to get a pebble in a bag of multi-purpose compost. Nice and upright. Then the doorbell went, I did delivery. Of, uh, seven bags of my cars of fungi, four for myself, three for the shed. So I took them down for them, dropped them off, come back and finish my canners off. All outside, ready to be weighted. Paul, our second inputter. Am you with us, mate? I am, Mick. Good man, good man. What oh, you want to know? <clears throat> What's that? No, oh, that's me radish. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I didn't take it to uh, Malvern because where you can see it's red halfway down, it was actually hollow. It had started to rot. Uh, uh, well, it was a real disappointment when I did get to Malvern and found that half of the stuff there was rotten anyway, and they'd still put it in. Mm. But me being me, I thought, no, if it ain't if it ain't good enough, I ain't sticking it in. But it was actually ever the heavier than the one that uh, the one that won it that year. Yeah. Even even with all the rot, I think it was uh, twenty one pound, as you see it there. So you can only summarise what the weight would have been if it um, yeah if it had been solid all the way up. But it had got I don't know whether you can see, but it got like five. Five heads on it. Ah, uh, it, uh, it was a proper freak. It was, but um, so you get definitely. Your Sorry, that's how they get in weight. Extra is extra weight, did it? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, um, I mean, that's it. It, 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 it says you got to enter it in, in good uh, condition. Well, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a good result. Well, I'd say well, put him through. I don't just, know. Just I, get someone's on the good table. Exactly, I don't know whether you remember the, that you walked into the tent, you could smell that one cabbage, it was that it was that rotten. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Mm. And there's a few tomatoes that were rotten there and all sorts, but uh, I'm, I'm not in that gang. Yeah. If it ain't good enough, it ain't going in, so. Yeah. But uh, I, I tried again last year, no good whatsoever. I think it ended up at about two inches and then it just went to seed, so. Yeah. Just one of them things growing exactly the same place. Well, now this was, is somebody else you've done, what you've done here. I was chuffed about that. That was, um, I've been trying with the longest chilli forever, as you know. Wow. Um, and uh, I, uh, I actually started a plant off for Jimmy Checkets at the same time I started these off. 
Um, as you know, he, he, he beat me in our show. He'd got, he'd got more length, but I'd, I'd kept that one back. I hadn't told him I'd got that one. Uh-huh. So that, that went to Malvern. Um, and that was, uh, that was 496 millimeters. Well, the world record's only 505. Well, and I think the well. guy, the guy who beat me, beat me by four mil. Yeah. So uh, he was just, he was just under the world record as well. So, uh, hey, there's always this year. That's it. I've kept the plant. Well, I've kept a plant that um, was grown at the same time as that overwintering, and uh, that's putting new leaves. So it's it's actually got a flower on it. I think I put I put a couple of pictures up a few weeks ago. I think of it. Yeah. Um, but that's the leaves are getting thicker and stronger on that now. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. See what happens with that. Yeah, but I was well chuffed with that. And this this is you weighing the pepper that I took the uh, world record with. Your volume's gone, if you won't get it. <coughs> Obviously, evidence. Oh. Oh, the scale's ready. Start from the beginning. If it's chilly, just weighing this through the mate is, uh... <coughs> Obviously, evidence. Up the scale is ready. I'm a natural red society judge, so I'm going to have a look at that or anything. Nice and solid, as you can see. Scales I've just turned on, he's on zero. You see it on there? Yep, yeah, yeah. so we've bumped the trap on the scale. Four, six, zero grams, obviously. I mean, nice would have been anxious, well, wouldn't it? Well, mate. Thanks, Mick. No problem. Good on you. Thanks, Mick. Yeah, so I actually required that to uh, to get anywhere in the first place with uh, Guinness because it was COVID time. So uh, if Mick hadn't have done that for me, I don't think I'd have ever got there. But there was a lot of argy-bargy, um, backwards and forwards. Uh, and I said, see it you better come out and see it quick because it's not going to last much longer yeah they didn't come out but uh i just kept sending the evidence and which they couldn't deny you know what i mean so uh good man thankfully i got it in the end I, there was a point where i just thought you know you, you, you've done it but you ain't done it because nobody's ever going to uh recognize it but uh, yeah, you gotta fight the buggers uh, well, if I'd have had a thousand pounds, they'd have come out and verified it. Yeah. So it, it it tells me now it's all about money, all about money with them. It's not um, it's not as they portray that they're like find, trying to find new Guinness World Record people and all this business. Yeah. They didn't even give me a copy of the book. You have to pay for the you have to pay for the certificate and everything. So uh, a bit disappointed on that, really, but um, mm. that, that, that's the way it is. Yeah. But it's something I've got that's enough. As far as I know, it's still current. I don't think anybody's beat it yet. So. Uh, Good man. That's it. You've got it. So. Well, yeah, yeah, I've got it. And even if uh, they didn't even print it in the book. It went in the amendments at the back because they said because again because of coronavirus, they'd sort of pre-printed the book, and then they just updated slightly the following year. And uh, yeah. all it was was I think it was one line in the back of the book. Well, it should be in properly this year. Pardon? It should be in uh, this year's properly. No, no, it's not going to be in. I asked them. I'm not so, bothered, uh, right? Yeah, but I ain't bothered. I'm not bothered. No, you have done it. I, I, that's I it. Remember, I, yeah. I can remember when we started. First of all, they said that's, that's not a chili. We had to prove. That's right. That's right. And, and yeah. just they don't like it up them. And because yeah. you have beat them, they, they don't like it. So well, I, I give them the DNA of it and everything. Yeah. Where it where it originated from, how it started off. Yeah. Um, how I improved it, if you like. Uh, and it, it, it was just that year, 
because of shutdown and everything, I think that helped because I was up there every single day. Yeah. I'd got nothing else to do. I, so I, was up there, I was up the allotment every single day, uh, opening and closing the door for the heat and swearing at it and one thing and another, you know what I mean? Uh, they reckon if you talk to them, they, uh, they appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, got it. it just, it just kept growing. I didn't even thin the plant down. Mm. It, it naturally thinned itself down. I've, I've noticed over the last couple of years that they do that. Yeah. They'll just shed and get rid of certain fruit. You know, you think I've got a good one there and then all of a sudden it just drops off. Yeah. And something else will start coming and... Uh, that's, that's, that's nature though, eh? Because with, with the fruit trees, you get it in June. It's called June yeah. drop. Mm. So plants just getting rid of what they don't want. Yeah. Any road? I did, I did feed it all, all the nutrients for the... Um, well, actually that one, I just fed that on parts nutrients yeah. since then i've been sponsored by Evaponic and uh they've given me they've showed everything up but i've got close but i ain't beat it yet so uh yeah. they just said keep doing what you're doing what the uh, hell that's, that, that's uh that's that's luna's appreciation of it <laughs> <laughs> there's a bloody loopy hers. well that's why she's called luna lunatic in it oh yeah. Cheers, Paul, man. All right, cheers. Good man. Right, here's another little chap. Um, Chicken Daily, he's telling me to pop me on. So I potted him on. He's uh, a cross between Happy Summit and uh, Fireworks. Another one there. If this weather starts getting a bit, what you say, uh, dirty. It was after three or four days, because so I'm lifting the cover off and chicken every day. Dust gets in, and you have to change the waiter. Obviously, just just looking after the chaps. Then I've got it the, the seeds out in a new cup, and that's the crap you get at the bottom. And just put fresh water in, not cold. Once again, you put warm, it's warmer in, water in, you're helping them out. Look at that leaf, love it. Tropical on the black. I forget where I had this one from. But this is a Boston leaf and all. Exactly the same thing, it gave me a bit of feed on these eyes. I've got three bags of this luckily. You can see the old roots and the nice new white roots. Sliced him down the middle. There's a little chap I spotted fast asleep. So I took him out and put him in the compost. Uh, you've seen the new shoots on him that coming down here. So I'm just scraping away from the bottom. Because the rhizomes, when they come out, they will go up towards daylight. So you ain't going to catch any taking the, the soil off. For the plant down here. I can get three out of him, so that's what I did. Put these leaves are uh, a beautiful colour as well. Exactly the same as the others. We get the sunlight behind them. The place and where you get the sun behind, they enhance the colours. There's another one when I split them, another dollop of worms. I was having a right uh, humdinger, so I split them and all. So what I'm going to cut off is the old yellow roots. You can see the white new ones. Now I can get them in the pots easier. Another one that looks duff. So it was. Don't need it. He ain't going to do any good. So I'll just slice him off. And the rest of the plant will be okay. Or pride. <coughs> in fact, this one went to be made. Uh, we had this door in. Mick Sealy's missus. It was a golden wedding anniversary. I thought it was last Friday when for a meal. And I give her this as a present. 
think there was the last two holes potted up there yet. So any worms I do find, they go back in. Uh, in the pots from last year, there's these small beads, and this is feed, what was in the original pots. For some slow release, I took them out, just bunged them on the top of these. Give them a good waiting, once they dry out. Put them back in the greenhouse. In the postman come, I loft. I don't think I've used them, but uh, I still went through the catalogue. Dinner time, and what was in there? Exactly the same one, kind of tropical and black. And uh, one for 1.5 meters, about 20 quid. Saw this film um, last week, Boston film. If you get the chance, well, it's a true story anyway, which is what I like, but uh, geography, history, plus it's a learning curve. I didn't know till uh, six months ago that the Japs invaded in China. China? Bloody you, how can you invade China? Well, they did. Besides invading, trying to take over everyone else. Philippines, Manila, and all that crap. But uh, this film is superb. And it gives you updates on, on that side of it as well. So if you get the chance, watch it. Any scraps I get now, they they go straight in the bin. I don't wait till uh, till I got a, a weekly tub full. Ben was back home for a, a few days, basically because of the dentist couldn't call get a dentist down under for long and for me. Because every bubble was private. Then not the one again. And uh, th this is his favourite poor dog. So I jogged him out of an all into that and bossed him. Only drawback when it comes on. We never have any scraps. Bloody eats everything. Any boars you can just make them out down there. There's loads of them growing well. Or some close ups later on. This is Stevens Park. This is where I've started taking it out. There is a better run over there. And what the council started doing, throwing whole trees in the brook. Most stuff for the beavers, God knows. Of course, there's been any beavers down there. Don't know how they do it. Right, this is um, like creme over here. And you've got the, the allotments as well. Where my mate uh, went to his funeral with the Castellas before us. Uh, Ray Paul, who used to judge our dailies for us, Georgian Exhibitor, he had an allotment down here where they buried him, church is here, and buried him at the side of the fence, feeding, you can see his plot. I thought that was number seven. Still loads of leaves left. Like click some more. Right, well, these last year when I saw these uh, white with a black B, the middle bit is called B. I thought they were nice because the black enhanced the white. So I sent for them. So I sold so, uh, so them. And they may come through yet. Yeah. Anything new? I love a pair. Uh, raspberries. Obviously, these lot of uh, pushing me net up. So I take their net off and bung it down the back, down the side there. So I know where it is. Uh, just go back on that one. And the other raspberries, which is there. That's what we've got on to now. These are all gold. What you going to look for? Harvest from mid August to early October because of um, all my fruit and veg. Well, everything now uh, is for the show. So our show, second week, uh, first Saturday in September, perfect. I think we'll be ready for that. Uh, produces food on your first year wood. That's a good one. Self fertile, another good one. Those are the different crosses they can do now. 
uh, you'll get boxed in plans. Uh, that's what I want. So fertile mean pollinates myself. No, I said poor man. Jared's growing then, Mick. Oh. He's uh, he, he grew them last year as well. That's quite good. Good. Yeah, they did really well. It's supposed to be good tasting and all. No, he loves them. Absolutely loves them. Yeah. So hopefully they'll do all right for you. Excellent. Right, these two tubs, which I was going to use for the carrots, stump carrots, I'm now going to use them for my gladdies. Because um, I'm running out of room for my gladdies, which is obvious. Eh? So, them two nets on the bottom, with a bulb at the back, perfect. Now I'll start filling these up. Right, uh, when I give that talk, or it might give me four bags of the old um, guinea pig muck. So I need another bag. Or we'll just fill that one up, stick back in the greenhouse. In fact, I emptied that within two days. So I did empty a bag in the end. So this is now filling the, the raised beds up. I've got the mixture here as well. So good dog. Uh, guinea pig muck went in. Then it's all the ingredients from my compost. Uh, most of them I can blend together and mix in. Plus I've got all the ingredients in the tunnel. So there's normal mixture, which is a spent mushroom compost. Worm cast leaf mold, that's what we're getting out now. So, all my brews are going in. You still get worms in leaf mold, but it's poor bacteria. Uh, I'm going to break them down, but that's beautiful stuff. And that lot mixed together, just filling them up. You're only going to put decent stuff in, then you're going to put no crap in. That's why you're going to get a good return out of it. It's surprising, but they do take some filling. There's my own compost, and I start again with the details. Until I fill it up. Even uh, clover compost, but there I'm, I'm rubbing it out by hand, so there's no lumps in it. There's the lumps that come out. You know where they're going by the fruit trees, top of the garden. Well, them fruit trees um, look after me this year. Well, it's first year for all the fruit trees. Big black over Bill's mothers again. And that's some crap just lately. Today's been really crap again. I need some more compost, so I'll just scrape the top surface away. Boston stuff. Because I want the worms in here now, because it's a raised bed, I left them in there. Another dollop. I died loads there. Full of worms, that's what I want. Just get them on there. And I'll go through that lot. Nearly got enough in. Perfect, look at that. Finish with that, so I'll level it out with my hand fork. Needs watering, so I'll wager it. Back to the bed. Uh, this is a um, rabbit book with straw, which is broken down, so that goes on. Good watering, and then my netting. Stop the squirrel hiding his bloody nuts. So them two will be ready. Well, couple of days of rain and that, that's going to drop down a bit, not just 
Tom Gresson with the own compost. But that's two more I've got in the gladdies. Um, because my beds over here, which I started last year with my gladdies, I've got to start this end this year because they've got a tulips in. And you'll be out in time. Uh, so it'll be done in a bit. But this was last Thursday at our general meeting. Going up to Cradle Town Football Club. I took all my stuff up on the morning for the raffle and all that gum. There's one of our old trading sheds which got up there and that's got all the tables and the marquees ready for when we bung down here. Right, general meeting. Adam Alexandra, the seed detective. He had a good turnout. In fact, everybody gets a good turnout. Maybe he's setting up. All ready to kick off. And there's a the man himself. The adventures. In fact, this, this could have been could have been a film. Excellent speaker. Adam Alexandra, the seed detective. He was a BBC producer and got some bloody guts because they used to cover war zones for the BBC. Meaning, uh, once he was set up wherever they, they sent him, he would then go to the local market in, in the town where he was. And what he's after is veg seed, because he's a veg man. Uh, he's been all over the world and each village this is all over the world each village have got their own strain of uh, seed got well, their own variety they, uh, it's, it's, it's like us with a show you have competition who can do best in, in, in any village and then that village uh, gets its name you know that, that they grow good stuff and the next village tried to try to job it. And there's that many places that you was going to. Some of the war zones, there ain't many villages left. Meaning, uh, seeds are being wiped out and they've lost them forever. And this is what he was, he was after. He was trying to get as much seed as he could. Um, but, 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 but. Uh, he works for Garden Organic and Coventry as well, because they have seed heritage collection. And the, there's loads of this stuff there. But he was a Boston speaker. And, uh, let's have a, a break halfway through. He's supposed to only give us an hour. We got two hours out of him. Well, I did. And that, that's his seeds he was flogging at the end. And he just, all he was asking for was a donation in his little but uh, there's some uh, Boston seed there. Really, in his seeds. Back on that one there. Uh, when, when he finally finished his talk, uh, gave me his thanks. And uh, I, I was told, well, I told him the speaker we'd ever had. And uh, there, he stayed behind and had, had a drink with us. In fact, he bought, he got the round in. He's a good lad. He, he, he's that impressed with us. Everybody was there. He said, you've got a great crowd. And, uh, so I thought, right, I'm going to job him. And asked him about our show, if he'd like to come up again and all this. Well, I asked him. Uh, I emailed him after... It says we're the only uh, month next year where I ain't going to speak yet is June. It's the only gap I've, I've got to fill. And uh, also, I'm emailed him. So, I sent him a schedule for the show so he knew what we'd enter. And uh, put me brain into gear. This is 
got, you can always put an extra class just for our lot, i.e. the people who bought seeds off him. And uh, anything that every, anybody grows from seed off him is ready for the show that he exhibited. And that, that was uh, another incentive for him to come to our show. Just to see if that works. Dear Mick, I too had a blast uh, last week. What a great club you've run. It was a privilege to have been there, uh, to be listened to by such serious growers. June the 6th, uh, 2024, I'm free. However, I'm aware that I'm the most expensive speaker you've had, as I told him. But my rates have changed a bit, and you might find me too expensive. I understood last week because my rate is high when it's uh, Anyway, his next one will be 335 quid. Bloody Nora. I'd like to come uh, on the second. Judging a special class would be novel and then entirely subjective. You mentioned the schedule, what do you mean? That tells me you don't go to many shows. Well, you wouldn't do it, would you? Really. BBC publisher. So I sent him a schedule as well. Uh, I would only come for the day though. Meaning I've got him. He's come up for the day. So next committee meeting we got. That's gonna put an extra class in just for our lot with the seeds. Next day I went back up there. Uh, nice and dry. And all this seed I've collected over the years, I've dished some out to your lot. And uh, some out to the gardens from the garden club, obviously. So the spare seeds. Now I know he's going to look after us, Trevor, Dickie Trevor, who runs the place, plays his own football club. I says, right, all the seeds I'm going to bung down here, just to help you out, get a bit of colour on. So all the large poppies went to the back, small poppies went to the front, and there's loads of stuff to dish out. I even got Trevor putting some out himself. Probably the first bit of garden he's ever done. Right, uh, this is pretty common sense. Motorway retreat. Pull the plug on the small motorways. It's, it's common sense. If people die, it's not bloody working. There it's been on the news again. I'm not going to scrap them. But they're only making new ones. I've got to scrap the bloody lot. Run out of yoghurt for breakfast, I had to nick one of Pet's porridge. Runny honey and gone solid, so I'll put it that way then. It looks nice and runny, a bit much. Right, do me daily check. Look at me little chaps, see what's come through or whatever. Lucifer, this is a, another strain, obviously. He's a redder. So when they do come out, you can have a propagator and sit on the top of the greenhouse with the rest. Fruit trees looking well, still nice and upright, without having stakes on. You uh, give them a good brew underneath them when you plant them, then they're going to send out good roots. Well, it's a raised bed anyway. So, good root structure, that will look after you, see how I'm doing. This was last time, last Sunday, that's why there was no, no Zoom. Easter Sunday, they always put a good spread on, beautiful. Look at that, what would it make, salmon. And I like the fish, there's crab, everything. Boston Day, except the Sunday come out. Look, that's the UK, potluck. Right, my first talk, this was um, shipped in a district garden club. This was last Wednesday. Another uh, talk in a church, Catholic Church or Shipton on Stewart, Coventry. Because church halls now, or churches, cheaper for garden clubs. 
and uh, surprised how many churches I'm doing talks to them. But this was inside, started rolling up. First time I'd been there. And uh, in the end, it was a good turnout and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But this is on the, the night when I got home. My first visit to Shipton Gardening Club couldn't have asked for a better speaker. That's what I like. This is my next talk. This one is Tuesday 25th of April. Short Teeth Methodist Church again, Church Hall. This is Will and All, Wolverhampton. That's on compost. Pound entry for non members. Doors open 7 30 and 8 pm start. Anybody's interested, just give me a tink. And this one is the day after. Wednesday 26th of April, Etching the Ill Garden Club. Garden Guild, sorry. This is in the village hall. Etching Guild, Rugeley. Postcard, Warsaw. Last year on the plot. Uh, non members there, three quid. So, all is an antidepressant. Smell of microorganisms in the bassy. Microorganisms found in soil, compost, and leaf molds. Lots of nutrient meters and releases serotonin. A mood lifting hormone, which we all know, we know is good for you. Right, coming up next week. Potting up sweet peas because they like a nice deep root run. Different methods of uh, preparation for can of seed before planting. That was another one I'm trying. Getting me stuck canner out of the first pot. Plus, uh, Jeffrey will give us uh, input next week. Uh, I'll link this off his page and all. Did you know there's an Arab trying to buy every fish and chip shop in Britain? His name is Salt and Vinegar. <laughs> I'm bloody cold when I've seen that. I love stuff like that. Thank you, Geoffrey. Right, saw so this during the Wickers War. Uh, another group of men, country shows and events. And you know, see all the shows that I'm on. And if I'm getting away with it, I'm good to them. Plus, that's what I advertise my talks and they have different speakers advertising, whatever. I saw this one in. Please find attached to General Reading Centre, Law Welsh, regarding the cancellation of the autocultural section of the show. Uh, Roger Parsons from the uh, River Sweet Peas and that's on Sweet Peas Society. Disappointing news has arrived. The autocultural section of the Royal Welsh show would not be able. This includes uh, the best sweet pea show. So that's going to knacker loads of people up. Shows are folding uh, as their uh, as our gardening clubs. Cardiff Spring Show. I used to give free talks there that folded a couple of years ago. We're now running out of gardeners. I've had seven clubs ring me this year alone saying that they are folding no one to take over on the committee of the club when the old ones finish so all they can do is fold we have lost two generations of gardeners through gardening not being on the school's national curriculum eight years ago it should have come on alongside um, cooking uh, gardening only took place at our local primary school because I did it voluntary. Cooking lasted three months, then stopped through health and safety. By the biggest waiting list at a, at a after school activity. Kids love gardening. They're in the fresh air, doing practical and, and doing it themselves. Love getting their hands dirty, which is common sense they I had gardening at private school and at the boys' school. If exhibitors die off, 
there is no one else to take the place. Same thing in our gardening club. We are losing exhibitors. Uh, that's the reason I brought in the new classes and then got speakers on the subjects to get our members interested in growing sans sweet peas. It's just adding new classes to build the show up. Because the old exhibitors now, we ain't going to, well, they won't really do enough. Right, next one. For Pete's sake. Basically, it's not about the multi purpose compost being uh, withdrawn over the next year or two. Unlike Pete, they are not sterile. This is the crap they're bringing out. And they're not even close. Uh, we have encountered glass, plastic, shards of wood, bottle cups, bald sweets. In a, a new, low, new low this week, a shotgun cartridge case in bags of compost from one of the nation's biggest suppliers of retailers. Which uh, a, a few months ago we started off anybody buying any um peat free compost if you, if you do buy a bag just just uh let us know what it, and the, exactly the same things happening now i'm still getting crappy uh Surprising how many uh, fertilizers come from the Ukraine. No wonder Russia wants the, the country. It's now getting harder for us mortal gardeners. Another reason to try your own compost as a growing medium. It's trading sheds, garden clubs. Struggling and all. Right, these are from me composting talk. But, uh, before the cutbacks from Dudley Council, which is our local council, I used to be chairman of Dudley Horticultural Advisory Council. That means we had a, a quarterly meeting with reps from every allotment site in the borough. And uh, anything that was brought up, we sorted it out. Before I took on the chairman's job, we had a trip organised to Wolverhampton Recycling Depot. This is uh, what you throw away in your green waste bin. They call it compost. Sell it down the tip to put it back. Anyway, we have a trip uh, organised for that. Uh, I think it was about 18, 18 of us on the coast that went. Uh, went to the premises. And a rep jumped on the coach as we got to the the entrance to the depot itself. And as the coach drove round, uh, he jumped on the mic and he was explaining as, as the driver went round the setup. At the end, she asked if there were any questions. I said yes. How uh, can you get away with calling it compost when it, when it's not? She went and got one of her gaffers. Said the same to him. I says, my bin gets my spud tops that have had blight. Also, anything with allium leaf mine around that also goes in the bin, meaning it's crap. And you're making so-called compost out of it. It's not compost. You fell out of me at all. I ran the council up, told them, because I'm flogging this down the tip, a two quid a bag, meaning if you're a new gardener and you go in the tip, and you see compost too quickly, but well, that's good. Recycled, I'll do a little bit for the, for the world. Well, you wouldn't even grow a bloody fairy tales. Anyway, I'll run the cards, look, and uh, I fell out of me all. I rang the Soul Association because their little emblem is on there. So I rang them, asked them why their emblem was used on their bags of a. Uh, so-called compost I says uh, who did get to test it and this is no one has tested it the government have told us anything to do with recycling 
give them your trademark. Which is that. So they, they haven't even got to look at it. Uh, they fell out of me at all. If a new gardener, you, you ain't going to grow sod all in it. Uh, then I used to have the Express Star. And I used to write it in the letters paid. So I put, as I'm chairman of Dudley Horticultural Advisory Council, I'm advising uh, people not to buy this compost. It is not compost. It is rubbish. Uh, within 10 days, I'd had about 20 letters, emails, phone calls from gardeners from our next local council, which is Bromley Grove. And they did exactly the same. Now, that many uh, complaints their council, they made them change the word on the front and take that off and put top dressing. That's how crap it was. And there, there's ours. I mean, I've still bought a bag because I've got to have a look at it. I'd only just put it in the compost because I mixed it with other stuff so I know the good stuff. But uh, as far as growing anything, and that one is even worse than ours. That is from Birmingham City Council. And the allotment site there was exactly the same again. They, they couldn't flog it. So they started taking it to the site and says, do you want this? They says, no thanks, it's crap. Yeah, they wouldn't even put it on the road. That's how crap it was. Just go back on that one. Uh, a lot must return away and they, they couldn't get rid of it. So they're just crap as well. And every talk I do wherever I go, if their council is doing the same thing, people who bought their compost say exactly the same. It is crap. On a lighter note, I had an email from Gordon Direct and I read this twice. These are going to be perfect for my raised bed. Non-stop fragrant blooms for six months each year. That's what I want. Five old scented. Perfect. So I sent away for them. The standard bougainvillea. I think I've lost him. Uh, rugby women yesterday. Boston game. Well done, gals. Three field grown canna seeds come through. These are seeds from made some vein from uh, Canada. These crosses give you new strains, plus they're virus free. So, when they do show like that, obviously they come straight out of the propagator and go back on the on the top. Rod Steve sent me a photo and asked me yesterday why this is happening to his rhubarb. Basically he's had a chicken growth, thinks it's going to die, so it goes to seed. It goes to seed to survive in the sense that he's throwing seed and that will be plants for next year. So why does he think he's dying? So checking growth, it could be drying out and drying out, not being fed or not being picked, which I could say, say that's what this one is. It's not being picked, so it is done its life. It's like if you pick runner beans, the more runner beans you pick, the more you're going to get. That's why every time I go down, Jeffrey, Question, mate. No, uh, just a remark. I get this every second year. Every second year, my my rhubarb does that. Yeah. I just cut off the stem and let it go. And the next year, I don't get it. Like this year, I should get it again. Last year, oh. I didn't get uh, yeah. fruit stems. This year, I should. Oh. It's like every second year. It's like, I don't know why, but every second year, this happens. Strange. 
Best to pull your rhubarb straight out from the bottom. Go put them on. Because you, you pull the whole of that stalk out. Does that make sense? And that's it, people. 